Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri Appellate Attorney. And this is a short video where I'm going to talk about some of the takeaways from the Alex Murdaugh evidence. Not so much from the trial, but from the evidence that was presented. Let's head on down to the beach and talk about that. Thirty years ago, when a woman claimed that a man was the father of a child, they did blood testing. And while there was some evidence based on blood testing that someone might be the father, the only way that paternity was quote-unquote proved was through a presumption that started with a 50% probability that they are the father. Now, with DNA testing, that's no longer a problem. You can prove specifically who is and who is not someone's father. And I find that as technology continues to get better and better and better, what we have is much better evidence in trials. Now, one of the things that, that I'm a little bit interested in, just from my own personal experience, is the thing that they used in the Murdaugh trial to count the steps. Built into the iPhone is some kind of accelerometer that will measure your steps. How many steps did you take uh, in a particular period of time? They have a built-in health app, but irrespective of whether you are using the health app or not, it records that information and it goes into memory. Now, I'm not quite sure how long it's kept, but it does go into memory. And that provides some really powerful evidence, not only for were you awake, what were you doing, that sort of thing, but it also provides powerful evidence when combined with the GPS function on the iPhone. The iPhone has a GPS function. Part of it works off of Wi-Fi. In other words, it uses Wi-Fi to verify that the GPS readings are better, are good, particularly when it can't see all of the satellites that it needs. But generally speaking, <clears throat> the GPS on the iPhone is pretty good. And we carry around something that provides essentially second by second information about where we go and what we do every day in our pockets. And instead of having a phone in our pocket. What we actually have in our pockets is a tiny computer. A tiny computer that is invasive with regard to everything that you do in your life. It has your emails on it. <clears throat> it has your text messages on it. It records the date and time of every phone call that you make. And of course, in addition to that, you have the phone records that go with it, that buttress the information inside the iPhone. And yeah, you can remove some of those phone calls from the record by swiping to the left, but if you do that, then the phone records, when they come in, are gonna reveal that. So I don't think when people, you know, I believe the reference was made in the trial yesterday to what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Uh, I think that nobody really thinks about all of the tech that they carry around with them every day. And for that very reason, I think in this particular case, Mr. Murdaugh did not realize how closely his movements were tracked. So when he is up there on the stand sort of manufacturing his alibi, that's the term that Creighton Waters used, he's having to adjust second by second to new information. And I don't think he did nearly as good a job of it as he could have done if he had had all of that information beforehand and if he'd known about the dog kennel video much earlier. Then in addition to the iPhone, which I think has become ubiquitous. And it, and it really doesn't matter whether it's an iPhone or a Samsung phone or something else. If it has GPS in it, <clears throat> and if it has an Android or I, iOS operating system in it, it's going to record almost all of these details. Another thing that records details 
are the computers that are in cars. For about the last 15 years, manufacturers have been putting computers into cars. And some of them record GPS data, some of them record acceleration data, some of them record crash data, but almost all of them record some data. And when they record data, particularly if they have a GPS function, that data is time synced with the GPS time standard. So that the time that someone shows up at the car, so for example, in the Murdoch case, when the key connects with the car at certain times and those times get recorded, they are recorded at the same time as any movement would be recorded on the iPhone. And that is, I think, something that people, again, don't think about. If you look at the Brian Kohlberger case, a lot of what they got, the evidence that they are going to use against him at some point, a lot of it they got through technological means. And I don't mean to suggest that there's a lot of big brother out there, because if you're not engaged in committing some kind of heinous act, the government really doesn't have a great deal of interest in tracking you down. But if you go off the reservation and harm someone, then all of that tech that you carry around in your pocket and all of that tech that GM, Ford, Mitsubishi, and Toyota stick underneath the hood of your car, those are the tools that the prosecutors are going to use to convict you. And when you combine that with the ring doorbell cameras and the blink cameras that people put up and with the cameras that are in things like the Simply Safe system, when you combine all of that tech, it's almost like if the government wanted, they would have a pretty decent record of all of your movements over the course of any 24 hour period that they chose. I don't worry about it because I'm not the kind of guy who's going to hurt any member of my family or anybody else that doesn't try to hurt me. It is important, however, in one respect, because all of that tech, particularly the GPS synced tech, gives a hard timeline that you cannot escape from because it has that hard timeline that you can't escape from. It really doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room as a defendant. If you're guilty, there is a good chance that that technology is going to nail you down. Now, <clears throat> I tried precisely one criminal case in my career, so I'm not an expert. I'm not a criminal attorney. I'm not somebody who does this for a living. I handle appeals, and I've handled criminal appeals, but I don't do criminal trial work for the most part. But I've, I've handled exactly one trial that was a criminal case. And the major piece of tech in that case was a firearm that the prosecutors in Kansas City brought into the courtroom, loaded, and sat on the table five feet away from the, the defendant. So the idea that Prosecutors are getting smarter and better about data and about GPS and about technology should really be uh, a lot more important to people who are thinking about committing crimes because the only way really to get away with committing a crime at this point is to leave your cell phone at home and to use a car that was made somewhere in the 1980s because Otherwise, they are going to be able to track you. Oh, and I might add, you probably ought to wear a mask because there are cameras everywhere. Uh, a couple of years ago, they were able to track down a serial killer by virtue of his face appearing on the cameras that looked down into the cars on one of the Florida freeways. So again, there are a lot of ways that the government can find to track you down if you break the law. Maybe I should consider this a public service announcement to criminals, but it isn't. It's meant to make you aware, particularly if you actually wind up having to serve on a jury, of just how good 
the government has gotten at producing data, hard data, that really can't be disputed in court. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you again so much for watching. Please have take the opportunity today to do something nice, and God bless you. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will catch you on here next time. Everybody have a terrific day. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.